Today we are discovering what secrets Survivor the Australian Outback did not tell us in the edited TV show. Some of these are game related, some are strategic, and some are just plain silly. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it's fair game to be considered a secret. And while most of the secrets here are focused on Survivor the Australian Outback, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. Heads up, this list contains secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. Not every single secret in existence about the season is in this video. So with that, let's count all 40 of them in absolutely no particular order. 42 days, 16 people, one Survivor. Number one, Deb Eaton. You remember Deb, right? She was not only the lady who suggested that they make their shelter out of rocks, but she was also the first boot from Kucha. Well, 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 in this special that aired after the season concluded, she drops a bombshell on all of us that I am still floored by. Before Survivor, I was happy. I was with my husband 20 years. I loved him for 20 years and we were together. He died. I fell in love with his son. He is the best thing that ever happened in my life. Somebody at the National Enquirer saw my name, Debbie Eaton, and my boyfriend, Bob Eaton. Eaton and Eaton, and they're not married? Maybe it was naive on my part. I mean, did I know that the public would find out that Bob and I were a couple? Sure. But I also thought the public was intelligent enough, understanding enough, that when they heard the circumstances, they weren't going it wasn't gonna be like a witch hunt, and it's been like a witch hunt. Survivor for me has been a double-edged sword. Did I have some great experiences? You bet I did. But it's living with the after effects now. Was it worth having that experience to be feeling like this? If I could do it all over again, I wouldn't do it all over again. That's all. What do you think of me and Survivor? <laughs> That's what I thought. Number two. Like Borneo before it, the cast of the Australian Outback were legitimately popular across America, and none more so than Colby Donaldson, who went on to have kids named after him, such as Sherry doing this in Caramelon, but also do some film roles like this time he was featured on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Where's this survivor? He, he's the survivor. From the, from the television show. Survivor. I was over in Australia. Yeah. Listen, where's the other survivor? So here we are in a region of Australia where out of the world's 10 most deadly snakes, nine of them inhabit this region. Oh. It was harrowing. I was in a concentration camp. You never even suffered one minute in your life compared to what I went through. We had very little rations, no snacks. Snacks? We, what are you talking snacks? We didn't eat sometimes for a week. I mean, I wore my sneakers you? out, and then the next thing you know, I've got a pair of flip-flops. Flip-flops! We slip on the ground, on the dirt. 45 degrees below zero. We had mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes. Mosquito. Mosquito. You see this glass eye? Huh? Huh? Well, have you even seen the show? Did you ever see our show? It was called the Holocaust. I'm a survivor. 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 I'm a sur Number three. If you are watching this without knowing the results of season eight All-Stars, then I suggest skipping to secret four. Okay, you had your chance. In Amber's audition video for the season, she says something I find pretty crazy considering what happens when she plays a second time. I would be the ultimate survivor because, uh, actually I had a dream, the host came to me in a dream, told me that I would be the ultimate survivor, so I'm gonna trust the host and that's what I'm gonna do. By the way, thank you for watching Once Upon an Island. Liking and subscribing really helps, and if you wanna pick what videos I make and watch every video weeks and even months early, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. If that interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Number four, Colby versus Tina. To this day, many still think Colby should have won, and with different people on the jury, maybe he would have. But Colby has gone on to acknowledge in the show and afterwards that Tina was the brains of their alliance. However, watching the smug host here ask this question in front of Tina just kind of makes me cringe. Why isn't there something wrong with the game that you thoroughly dominate? I mean, you won every reward challenge, you won every immunity challenge, I mean, you, you had the game in your hands, you won everything and didn't win the game. Isn't that a little bit like a guy going out and playing golf, making 18 holes and one, he doesn't win? Number five, that's not a knife, that's a knife. Survivor was big time with their advertisements back in the day, even getting Crocodile Dundee to promote this season. This is the island of Pulau Tiga, the place where Survivor began. Pull that an island? 
That's not an island. This is an island. On Sunday, January 28th, CBS is stranding 16 new castaways in the Australian outback, the most hostile environment on the planet. They'll have to build shelter, find food, and survive each other. Survivor, Australian Outback. The adventure of a lifetime begins right after the Super Bowl on CBS. Can you survive the white? Number six. Kel, Jerry, and the beef jerky. At this point, I think he had it. For a time, I believed he didn't, but I think I'm with Jerry now. I've turned a new leaf. But why have I done such a thing? Here's an interview with Kel, followed by Colby and Tina speaking separately about it in the DVD commentary. Mr. Gleason, yeah. talk to me about this. Oh, God. Beef jerky. Oh, uh, what a... Those false allegations bother me more than being kicked off the you show. You didn't have any then? I didn't have any. My then why did they think you had some? I don't know. Did anybody ever see beef jerky? You know what? I honestly did see Kel eating something. Whether it was beef jerky, I don't know. But let's give the facts. Kel was stopped at the airport customs. for pound of beef jerky. Thank you. Yep. Right. And secondly, he was caught before we went out snuggling an extra an pair extra of pair tennis, tennis shoes. shoes. And we, number we three, the yep. they were trained in the military to sew beef jerky into the hem into their of their clothes. clothes. I believe them. However, Kel's co-workers have his back no matter what. And in the special that aired after the season ended, they did this. One day I walk in and there's this huge dartboard of Jerry. They're so angry. And they're just like, they're hammering this photo. We've had to replace that photo several times. Number seven, the DVD commentaries for the season are gold. Really, they're gold in every season that has DVD commentaries, which in case you're wondering, are seasons one, two, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But the ones this season that really stand out to me are the commentaries with Jeff and Colby who are clearly bromancing. In this secret, Jeff explains the family visit logistics and how he likes them, and Mark Burnett didn't really care. We have, uh partaken of margaritas. Kids, if you're watching, we're adults, we can do this, and we're just having a good afternoon. Two friends looking back on, a, on a, something that was a really, really fun experience. On a great, great, genuine time. She came to Australia because it was very, very last minute yeah. because they can't, you know, they, they weren't, know. They weren't gonna fly everyone over. Yeah. And, and, and as soon as I won that challenge, they had her on a plane in Los Angeles, and 16 and a half hours later, she showed up in the outback. Wow. Every time it comes up, are we gonna do loved ones this season? And I'm always at the head of the pack going, are, what are you, it's a question? <laughs> this is one of the best episodes every season. But it says so much about how people re relate to love. Because there are people, there are people in high positions, including Mark Burnett, for whom a loved one visit would mean nothing to him. Number eight, Nick Brown was not really portrayed favorably this season, and in the back from the Australian Outback special that I've referred to a couple of times, he says he hopes Survivor is not all that he will be known for. Well, he is right, and Nick is now the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Washington. Number nine. Back to Colby and Jeff's bromance, which is clearly taking place before Jeff and Boston Rob fall in love. And this commentary between them is just wild. Your dad right. is this amazing architect yeah. who is a, a neat guy, and he you guys came over to my house one night and with when, a buddy when, of his. when your dad was here. Yep. Yeah. And we watched an episode of Survivor. That's right. And in fact, I sneaked him a, a, a sneak peek at next week's episode, <laughs> yeah. and he got such a kick out of that. Yeah. Talk about a life changer. You're one of my closest friends, one of my very closest small circle of of tell everything to friends everything. came as a result of this show. Yeah, and like we've always said, we, we would have ended up being buddies regardless of how yeah. we met. I've had the opportunity over the last few years to become close with yours, and I've never met a guy uh, a guy, especially your age, that is that has the relationship with not only his parents. Number 10. People are always doing what they can to sneak food in Survivor, whether it be out of an actual challenge or even from a reward. Jeff says the rules vary on what is allowed. Look at that, though. It becomes an event she, for Elizabeth to take a rock. She's smashing a macadamia nut, and that, yeah, that was a big deal. Are those things you stole from the earlier challenge? We, the challenge with the slingshot. Yeah. Macadamia nuts are, are indigenous to that part of Australia, and... Uh, you use them instead of marbles and we use them yeah we used them in the slingshot challenge as ammunition we then started smuggling the macadamia nuts during the challenge into our pockets so that we would have a little snack on the way back to which camp. i clearly caught knew. yeah you caught us but, no, you, but you let us have yeah it. you let us have i it. thought it was great number 11 alicia kimmy and the finger wave is an iconic moment of the season that frankly got 
way overplayed and blown up on a national level. Like people would not shut up about it. I remember this from being 11 and thinking, wow, will they ever stop? Survivor knew they had gold on their hands when they advertised this episode before it aired. The whole nation's being swept away by Survivor, the highest rated show in America. Thursday, the pressure is building. We're not the family we appear to be. And the castaways reach the breaking point. So don't miss the phenomenon that's breaking records everywhere. It is going to be one hell of a show today. All new Survivor, CBS Thursday. Number 12, Survivor's budget has been slashed over the years, that's why they're married to Fiji now, but the budget for these early seasons post Borneo were insanely high, and why is that? Well, when your ads sell for this much, it makes perfect sense. Survivor's amazing popularity has of course not gone unnoticed by the folks on Madison Avenue. 30 second commercials during last night's finale sold for $800,000 and several advertisers sought opportunities to get their products onto the show itself. CBS made about $12 million per special advertiser. On the flip side, these advertisers got amazing exposure. I mean, an event like Survivor doesn't come around every day. Number 13. Speaking of the finger waving fight from earlier, not all is what it seems on the show as we hear in the DVD commentary who really instigated the fight between Kimmy and Alicia. Uh -oh. Look at Jeff, look at Jeff Jeff Barger just ran away because away. Jeff started, he started all that whole thing. Yeah, he Jeff wanted to he... want to watch it. You would think he'd want to sit there and watch no, it. No, because he wanted to get out because yeah. you and I would have ripped him a new one. Barner started <laughs> that whole it. thing. That's Alicia, right. you don't know this, but when you take the boat down the river, we heard you for a half a mile. Did because you? Because the water, the sound <laughs> travels up the river for a half a mile. You didn't stop. Number 14. Ready for something unfair that you probably never noticed in episode 5 of this season? Normally, when the tribes are unbalanced in terms of numbers at a challenge, whoever has more members sits out any extra players they have. You've seen this time and time again. Well. They made us keep all of our people. Yeah. Yep. The only challenge in the history of Survivor where it was outnumbered. Right. Yeah, I, did, I didn't agree with this at all because we had to have it's Every, easier all the to maneuver. Team members had to be That's at right. the one spot. It is easier to maneuver through this maze with less people. Absolutely. Having everybody having to change directions was the so problem. So officially, we're putting I this protest. challenge under protest. Officially, I'm yes, it's that. officially <laughs> under protest. Number fifteen. How did Colby trick production with his Texas flag that he got to use as a pseudo tarp for his tribe? Well, before I even put it down on my list of five, I called the contact number. I don't even remember who it was I got a hold of, but I said, this is kind of an idea I have, but I want to run it by you. And she said, what is it? And I said, it's a Texas flag. I bet it wasn't 10 minutes later I got a call from her and she said, don't even submit a list, bring the flag. And I know they were laughing going, this guy is so dumb. He's going to bring a Texas flag. Every teammate he has is going to hate him on day one. What I didn't tell him was that the flag was going to be eight foot by 12 foot made out of waterproof nylon and have metal grommets sewn in the perimeter all the way around 12 inches apart so we could strap it down like a tarpaulin. So we had instant shelter. So those potential haters in my tribe became lovers real quick because I provided shelter within 30 minutes of landing on the beach. Number 16. You may not know that the original plan on how to start the season was to have everyone skydive out of a plane. All 16 cast members took skydiving training just to do it. Yes. Really. Here's what Roger has to say about why they didn't and what Jeff said he did instead. And uh, this is exactly what Mark Burnett said to me. He said, the good news is you've been selected to go to Australia to be on Survivor 2. And the bad news is you're going to skydive out of an airplane to get on the Australian continent. So, uh, but yeah, we were going to skydive uh, individually, nobody attached to us onto the Australian continent. And uh, so we were walking from the office out towards the plane and the guy in the office hollers back, tells me I got a phone call. So I turn around, go back, and it was CBS and uh, Survivor folks, and they said, hold up on making the jump. They, they said, we're having problems getting insurance on, yeah, wow. on all of you people. I remember you calling up to the front of the plane on your headset and telling the pilots, don't land this thing until everyone back here is sick. Yeah. With an evil grin on your face. Yeah. I think of the line I said was, don't, I remember saying, don't land it till we're out of gas. Yeah. You guys were going to be sick when you got off this plane come hell or high water. And I have, I have never been air sick, never felt nauseous. This was the worst trip I've ever had in the air. <laughs> Number 17. This next one can be cool if YouTube doesn't copyright me for this parody, so fingers crossed. Mitchell made an I Will Survive parody all about the Australian Outback and come on YouTube, leave this one up. At first I was afraid, hell I was terrified. I'm dropped with 15 castaways, split in two equal tribes. Well I'd worked out a crafty plan and I thought I'd firmly locked my fate. 
till some gourmet baker man sent my ass right to the States and now I'm back from the outback. Well, it seems like yesterday we landed while I dry heaved in a sack. I thought that Tino was my rock and I felt like Colby was no liar. Now I'm thinking what a crock, cause Jeff is putting out my fire. Lord knows I to ride, but we double tied. And with my allies jumping sides, well, hey, I knew my rice was fried. Weren't they the ones who clearly claimed this was a game? Well, they'd hold no grudges. And I suppose they thought I'd feel the same. Hell no, not I, cause I could survive. If only I had nabbed a pig, I could be leader of that tribe. Well, I couldn't gather wood like Keith, and I couldn't hold my lower teeth, but I could survive, and I would survive. Hey, hey. Number 18, but you don't think Mitchell is the only one around here singing, do you? No. I won't sing. That would be dreadful. Just ask my Wanda video. Instead, prepare for Marilyn to amaze you. Keith and Tina are my constellations. Mitch is the star. Kel's a young buck with no imagination. Jerry, la di da. Amber is the sweetest beauty, pure of heart and soul. Aside from that, she's the mad pup cutie and sings rock and roll. After shedding all my fat in the outback, hey, half, I might shed it all. <laughs> Number 19, Elizabeth Filarski went on to become a big shot after this season. She married Tim Hasselbeck and went on to become the co-host of The View for so, so many years. Jeff has even begged and pleaded her to come back so many times that when he asked again for season 31, she said, please do not call me again. Anyways, here is Roger and Elizabeth reuniting on The View. That fine gentleman right there, Roger Bingham, is here with us today. Yeah, and it you. is such a treat. He got me through that time and I come all the way from Kentucky just to see my little buddy. It's been eight been eight eight years. We went fishing every day together, yeah, four yeah. to six hours. And uh, she got she had never fished before. Nope. She finally got to where she could put the worm on the hook, <laughs> but she never could take the fish off the hook. So I'd pick out a good spot for her to fish in where I thought she could catch some fish and I'd go up a little farther upstream and if she'd catch a fish then I'd holler I'd hear her holler, Roger, I've got one I'd have to come back down and take the fish off off it's, the hook for her. It's so true. I still do that. So when I fish now I I call all the way from New York, Roger, come get my fish. Number twenty. But before Elizabeth fell in love with Tim. Him, there was someone on the cast of the Australian Outback that had the hots for her. Feist and those guys kept telling me that, that you know, she was the single girl on the other tribe. And I'd show up to the challenges and, you know, and, and we showed up at one. It was the one where everyone was blindfolded. Uh, and Feist said, hey, Colby, I was over there, you know, getting that team ready. And Elizabeth was asking about you. You know, I think you ought to make your move whenever the merge comes up. And I'm thinking, sweet, I'm in. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe this. So sure enough, a few days later, we get to the merge, and I'm so excited to just get some alone time with Elizabeth. I gotta meet her, I gotta go talk to her, <laughs> make my move, I'm in, here we go. Go over there to her, we're not on the log five minutes, and she starts talking about her boyfriend back home and how serious <laughs> they are and how much she misses him. And I knew at that point, Feist had pulled one over That's on funny. me. I went went over there when I finally caught up with him later, and he was laughing his butt off. Number 21, what don't we see when it comes to challenges beforehand? On the show, tribes show up, answer a few Jeff questions, and he quickly explains a challenge for those of us at home. And then we're off to the races. Here's what Colby and Jeff say that we do not see. And then everyone runs off to the bushes <laughs> to pee. Everyone is so nervous. And of course, we all, we all went to the bathroom before we left our camps. But once you get to the challenge, your your nerves kick up, your adrenaline starts going, and everyone heads for the bushes before before we begin. When you get to a challenge, what happens is, especially in an individual challenge, people will pull me aside and they'll say, "Let me ask you a question: Do I have to walk over the bridge, or could I swim under it?" Here's the here's the tip: Don't ask me, because the minute you ask me, I've got to tell you yes or no, and nine out of ten times I'm going to say no. That's right. We designed the challenge to walk over the bridge. But if I don't say you can, if I don't say you can't swim under it, then swim under it and win and be ingenious. But don't ask me. Number 22. How did Mike Scoopin pass out and fall in the fire? Since there was no footage of that event taking place, only the aftermath. Here's what happened from Scoopin's perspective. So I threw some later. dried sticks and leaves on the fire, and right. I was blowing on it and blowing on it, the hot coals. Fell. 
we just planning And them. it got smokier and smokier, and the wind changed direction, and it blew it the smoke in my face as I was inhaling in. to take another yeah. breath. I remember. And I just passed out. I can, I can physically remember actually falling into the fire and losing That's consciousness what I, as I, I was falling down. I didn't see you fall in, but... Number 23. But Scoopin is a nut, and he has a very, very checkered post-survivor past that you can look up yourself. Heads up. It's not PG at all. Anyways, he made some crazy suggestions after being medically evacuated that I am floored they even considered what he said here. I said, Mark, I want to see my tribe. He said, no, you were taking you to the hospital. I said, Mark, I got to see my tribe. And nobody would let me. And I made eye contact directly with Mark when I said, Mark, I need to see my tribe. And he looked at everybody and he gave that nod yes that he would let me see you guys before I left. Yeah. Mark told me if I could make it back in two days, he'd hold the game. And they did hold the game. Remember, yeah. they held it for like a day and a half. So you know, I didn't even eat it. for two days. I thought I was coming back. I didn't eat for two days, thinking I didn't want to get I ahead of you guys. I knew there was no way <laughs> you were going to be able to. I yeah. hate to say that, Mike. I wish you could have, but I knew it. You you were burned pretty bad. Yeah. I spent 10 days in ICU. I mean Number 24. When the Merge Tribe lost their entire camp because they built it in the dry riverbed, many of us were saddened and others wondered how they would recover. But the real question is, what did Rudy from Borneo think about this? And them people had to be pretty dumb to build their camp in a riverbed. Yeah. You know, when it rained, it uh, washed away and they blamed the elements, but I blamed their dumbness. Number 25. On season 11, Survivor Guatemala, they brought back Stephanie LaGrosa and Bobby John from Palau for the captain's twist for that season. But little did we know that before they chose those two, the original captains were from this season. Mark Burnett wants you and Mike Scoopin uh, to go to uh, uh, the next show in Guatemala. Well, if you remember, they ended up bringing back Bobby John and... Uh, mm -hmm. I think Stephanie on that, but originally we were we were going to be on that one. Number 26. The pre-jury of every season gets to go on a trip together to a foreign country to help avoid spoilers leaking to the U.S. about who has been voted out. Well, I think whoever was watching the pre-jurors from this season did a poor job. They had these people that were supposed to be kind of taking care of us. I don't even remember her name, but she was more interested in going after one of the crew members. This girl basically gave me a couple thousand dollars and said, be at the airport on such and such a date, you know, a couple weeks later. So basically I went backpacking through Australia. I didn't have a hotel. I was staying in hostels with the money they gave me. Um, I, 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 mean, I, I took my money, I sold my panties at a bar, there was a wet t-shirt contest I didn't participate in. Number 27, how come Jerry Manthe hasn't played again since Heroes vs. Villains? Well, as it turns out, she has been asked back one more time, and... You were asked to play a fourth time Blood vs. Water with your sister, right? You were supposed to be on that one. Yes, and then my sister got pregnant, and then they asked me to go on, I was married at the time, they asked me to go on with my husband, and I was like, oh hell no. I guess maybe if it was a good marriage, I would have been like, hell yeah, let's do this. But no. Number 28. Marilyn was a crazy character this season that I wish had made it further just to spend more time with her. But anyways, here are a couple of funny off-screen things that she did. We set Marilyn out yes. and she did not have to do this challenge, that's but right. she wanted to do it. So after it was over, they let Marilyn go oh and jump. Oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot all about she that. I have a great uh, Kale Marilyn moment. Remember when she, he used to help her put on her bra? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Huh? Now whoa. <laughs> She couldn't hey, reach what? back there and snap her bra. Oh so Kel would have to help Marilyn. Gosh. Number 29. After hearing how successful Elizabeth was after this season, did you experience a tinge of jealousy? Well, if so, you are not alone since Jenna from Borneo doesn't like how popular Elizabeth is either. It's like a drinking game. Every time Elizabeth tears up, take a drink. Is she annoys the crap out of me. Number 30. We all saw Katie briefly during Tina's loved one's internet chat before she played on season 27. However, we get more of a glimpse of her in the post-season special that shocked me with how thick her accent is. Oh, good answer! All the kids want to be my best friend. <gasps> Number 31. Did you know that right after Heroes vs. Villains, Colby hosted the competition show Top Shot. I personally enjoyed it as it was a shooting competition that had a hint of Survivor with how teams would vote off their weakest members. But the social politics were really, really downplayed. It wasn't about that at all. It's about the shooting. However, over the course of the show, people realized that, duh, we should vote off the strongest shooters so that we can win. 
Apparently, this was not liked at all and helped lead to the cancellation of the show, but I do still suggest the five seasons that they have. Number 32. You may have wondered, has anyone ever fallen asleep during Tribal Council? Well, the answer is surprisingly yes. Someone has done just that. People don't realize this. You know, as you mentioned, these Tribal Councils take so long. I was so tired. I fell, I fell asleep. The probes asked me a question. I was like, oh. Shut up. I, I woke uh, up. I was like, oh, no. How do I answer this? I'm sure they never use it in the show. Oh, they didn't. my goodness. I was sleeping. Hilarious. Number 33. Kimmy was treated like a little G god after this season by the animal rights community. Believe it or not, how brave of her not to eat the cow brain, apparently. Survivor 2's not so popular vegetarian who lost one million dollars, but not her convictions, Kimmy Kappenberg. For something that I'm believing in, people are like cheering me on, whereas when I was out in Australia, like, you know, people weren't so happy about that. Number 34. Oh, how times have changed in these 20 plus years in terms of how we view people's weight. For example, People were calling Kimmy fat when she played on this season, and I bet that would not happen today. My problem was, is before I went on the show, I went on a pint of ice cream diet every day, so I gained so like eight gain pounds. Weight? So I gained eight pounds thinking, oh, this is great, I'll live off my reserves. Next thing you know, I'm labeled the fat chick. <laughs> Who would have known? Number 35. Not only did Mitchell Wright and I Will Survive parody, as we saw earlier, barring YouTube copywriting it, but he even wrote a song for a musical, as we see in this secret scene. I'm a princess of the stage yes. to my fans yeah. and all the rage. I'm a diva, I'm a star. People tell me how I go far. Well, there's more talent in my rear than anything that I see here. Yeah. Face it, folks, the vote is in. I win. Yeah. Number 36. Deb was feeling uncomfortable with Kucha before she was voted off due to all their X-rated conversations that she says they had, and we do see during this interview. However, I feel like there has to be a connection to be made here between this secret and the first one I showed in this video, and I'm not sure how to connect it without seeming like a jerk. We had some conversations in the evening, and I didn't fit into the conversations. They were kind of X-rated, and in my perspective, they were intrusive. And it kind of separated me from the tribe right off the bat. Are we I just deep? got naked in a tent with a bunch That's of strangers. That's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> Give us the okay, dirt. A. Oh, boyfriend, husband, wife. Okay, you don't, you don't A, get, not girlfriend. married. Don't believe in marriage until I'm 35. Okay, don't say you're a virgin because I swear <laughs> to God, I'll people talk about the floor. <laughs> <laughs> My main concern was where the hell am I going to pay that here? <laughs> 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 Number 37. In Alicia's audition tape for the season, she went wild hunting a kangaroo with a boomerang. Maybe this practice is why she finished in second in the actual boomerang reward challenge. Darn. I got him. I got him. Ah, I got him. I All got him. right. I got so, him. you know. Well, looks like all my hard work and training has paid off. The roux is on the Barbie, and I'll never be more prepared than oh I am. Oh, my gosh. Number 38. Would Jeff ever play Survivor? I don't think he would ever be allowed to, and I don't think he wants to anymore, unless they did some sort of celebrity edition. But back in the day, when doing the commentary for this season... I would love to do Survivor. Uh, and I, I'll tell you the real reason. Now I'm at a different point in my life. I would like it because I'd like to see the feedback. I'd like to see what people how people see me. Number 39, can Keith cook rice? Well, he was made fun of on the show by Jerry and he felt like he needed to prove he could by making a cookbook after the show and heck, this video includes a recipe by him for anyone who cares. He goes on to explain the entire process like we're watching a cooking show, but if you want, I'll put the actual recipe on screen here and you can take a screenshot and try it yourself. Number 40. We have seen Mitchell and Marilyn's musical talents, but did you know Jerry Manthe was in a Faith Hill music video as one of her friends? Yeah, these people were celebrities. Though to be fair, in this one, it happened before Survivor. So which secret surprised you the most? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.